So we're talking today about escort licenses. Very basic, what are they? Well, an escort license um, was designed for people who are going to escort people to a social event, um, to an entertainment venue, or to private quarters, and it, not involving sex. But that's what the escort license was originally created for, was to um, get somebody who doesn't have a date, and they can bring a date, let's say it's to a um, charity function, something where there's a table, and then a nice date, and they go on their own way. Well, a lot of people, when they hear escorts, they think of prostitutes, prostitution. Um, I guess, how, are they, how is it not? Well, escort license, the minute it started, uh, it was a good idea. Okay, somebody's in town, they need a date to a, a, to a formal affair. Uh, then it quickly evolved into prostitution and sex for pay. And they are two different things. Now, the problem is, people assume that 90% you know, of the escorts out there are engaged in the sex trade. Now, that may or may not be true. Um, but the reason they created the license is to make sure we know who this person is. So somebody called an escort and got robbed. They know who they are. Secondly, we've set down the rules that they can't be a convicted felon. They can't have prior convictions for prostitution, at least for the five years previous. And that they also um, uh, are shown the guidelines where they're not allowed to offer sexual services. They're not allowed to touch themselves. They're not allowed to grope a uh, patron uh, over their clothing. They're not allowed to ask the patron to become undressed. So there's pretty strict rules if they're following the rules with the escort license. How many cases, I mean, is this a common problem or when someone gets busted that people come to you for? Yes, we probably uh, handle the most cases in Arizona for private lawyers because we have 10 lawyers who do nothing but criminal defense. So just purely by the numbers. And we also know the various defenses because believe it or not, there are some escorts who show up who have no intention of engaging in sex and then the person who called them gets upset the patron and then an argument ensues and sometimes there's uh, accusations of assault because they've been grabbed there's accusations of robbery they try and get their money back um, things of that nature and so we get a lot of people where the escort was not going to engage in sexual activity and yet the patron became upset interesting and so at that point, then the cops are called and they go to the hotel room or wherever they are. And then everyone gets a citation. And did that, do most of your clients, they did not know that you needed an escort license? Well, what happens is this. The police get called. Then they show up and the escort says, well, I was assaulted, but I'm not engaged in prostitution. The patron says, look, they advertised that they'd come over implied they would have sex, I gave them $300, and now they're not going to have sex, I asked for my money back, and they tried to leave with my money. And so what happens is the patron now is admitted to soliciting prostitution. The escort will now be cited for prostitution, and then they'll check to see if the escort actually has an escort license, and they'll add one more charge on top of it if they decide to charge the escort. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Are you surprised by how few escort licenses are actually registered with the city of Phoenix and Scottsdale? Um, I'm surprised with how many actually are registered. Not how few, how many. Uh, it, with the true escorts who are running advertisements, and by the way, the city of Scottsdale asks that you have to provide the actual advertisement, but the people who are running ads in the back page of the uh, New Times, etc., most of them actually have their license because they're the easiest ones to pick off. The police just simply have to call and say, well, do you have an escort license? Or what's your escort license number the minute they show up? So they're kind of wise to that. So most of the people um, that advertise on the back page do have escort licenses. And contrary to common belief, there's a lot of them who are not engaged in prostitution, but there are some who are. Mm -hmm. What is the penalty for not having your license? Well, uh, in the city of Scottsdale, if you violate the rules, it's a class one misdemeanor escort license. That means the possibility of six months, up to six months in jail, and up to a $2,500 fine with another 85% surcharges. So it could be quite expensive. The reality is the lack of an escort license normally isn't going to result in any jail, but the prostitution charge will. That will result in 15 days minimum for a first offense. So the, in your opinion, the escort licenses were started because to deter prostitution. It was started to regulate this industry? 
Yes, the escort license, in my opinion, was started to make sure that somebody wouldn't show up, an escort, who's going to rob the patron. So somebody genuinely needed a date uh, to a social event, and all they want is a, a pretty girl on their arm, they go to the event, cocktail where they say goodnight at the end of the night. Well, it prevents, supposedly, somebody from showing up who then um, tries to rob them, maybe tries to extort them, saying, well, you wanted sex from me, therefore I will claim this. So it actually helps to regulate them. Because if you're a convicted felon, or you've been convicted of prostitution prior, you won't get the license. So presumably, a licensed ex escort is not a criminal. That's the presumption. The qualifications to get your license, they ask you the basic information, name, you know, date of birth, all that stuff, and then uh, they do ask you if you had a criminal background, and then they also ask you the show name. Most people, when they hear that, they're thinking, hey, that's um, a cover. Actually, the show name, that's actually not a requirement under the statute, under the city statute. They just ask that, and people provide that. It's, a, it's an AKA, also known as. Um, but they will check if you have any outstanding warrants. They won't issue the, the, the license, and they'll arrest you on the spot. And they'll ask if you've had any convictions for prostitution or solicitation or prostitution in the prior five years, or an escort license violation in the prior five years. Okay, perfect. Do you think that the law is effective, that it catches people? I think when you say is the law effective, do you mean is it, is it effective for deterring prostitution? I'd say no. I don't think there's any law that's really effective for deterring prostitution, other than maybe you know five years in jail on a first offense. Um, I do think it is effective in getting higher level escorts who are not prostitutes, for example. You see ads for matchmakers, and they'll say, not only matchmakers, but individual date nights for single date. I think those companies run an above board uh, product. Mm -hmm. I think the person will show up, uh, they're not looking for prostitution, but it's going to be a very expensive date, um, a very expensive escort, usually the higher level, wealthier, older gentleman. So I do think for that quality or that level of clientele, it makes sense. For everyone else, I don't think it has any effect whatsoever on deterrent prostitution.